When one compares a romance language with Catalan, it's usually Spanish, Portuguese, or French. With Catalan, between all three, it's 85% mutually intelligible. But with Catalan and Italian, it's 87% mutually intelligible. This means that while there is more similar vocabulary, difference in phonology as well. But they also have closer grammatical structures. Let's look at some vocabulary that's very similar to each other. The word for always. Sempre. Sempre. The word for bird. Osei. Uccello. The word for money. Dines. Denaro. And the verb for go. Andare. Andare. But a lot of these cognates have false friends. Words that look and sound quite similar to each other, but of course have different meanings. Donar. In Catalan, this is the verb meaning to give. Donare. In Italian, this means to donate. Massa. Is the word for too much. Massa. Means mass in Italian. Però. In Catalan, this is the normal conjunction for the word but. Però. In Italian, this word means however. Pronunciation and orthography. The letter C before I or E has a soft sound. In Catalan, it's pronounced S but Italian has ch. We saw this earlier in the word for bird. Osei. Uccello. Note that in Italian, a long consonant is represented by two consonants at the same time. Another interesting difference is that double L has a different sound. In Catalan, it's pronounced y or l, but in Italian, it's just a long l sound. Note that gl before i or e in Italian makes the same sound l. The phoneme ñ is spelled differently. In Catalan, it's spelled NY, but it's GN in Italian. For example, the word means spider. Araña. Araño. Also, notice the different gender endings in both languages. R in both languages is pronounced either as a tap, r, or an alveolar trill, r. In terms of vowel sounds, they're quite identical to each other. This also applies to the diacritics, which are very similar to each other. Gender and articles. In Catalan, most masculine nouns end in O, E, or consonant, and S or OS is usually used to indicate the plural. In the feminine, it's A in the singular, but US in the plural. O, E, or consonant in Italian denotes masculine, and A represents feminine in the singular, but E and E are used to indicate plural in both cases. For example, this pair of words for flag in flags. Bandera. Banderes. Bandiera, bandiere. These words are feminine, but for a masculine word like game and games, that's choc, chocs, gioco, giochi. In Catalan, the definite articles are al and als for masculine, la and las for feminine, and for singular words that start with a vowel or h, it's l apostrophe. In Italian, they're il and lo for the singular masculine, i and li before Z or S plus a consonant for the plural, and for the feminine, it's LA and LE, respectively. And also for words that start with H or a vowel, it's L apostrophe as well. For example, these words mean the bread and the breads. El pa, el spans. Il pane, i pani. But for feminine words like the letter or letters, in this case, letters that you spell, it's La letra, les letras. La lettera. Le lettere. Verbs. Let's take a look at a sentence. This means, yesterday I spoke to my aunt. In Catalan, Ayer he parlat amb la meva tia. And in Italian, Ieri ho parlato con mia zia. Notice how both languages construct the past tense. It's formed with Aver. Plus the past participle in Catalan, just as it is in Italian, with Avere. Plus the past participle. While similar, Italian's form is used for both the simple past and perfect past tenses. In Catalan, this perfect past is used in conjunction with a separate past tense. Ayer vaig parlar amb la meva tia. This is called the periphrastic past, which is used with the verb anar, plus the infinitive of the main verb. Note that the first and second person plural forms are different in the present and periphrastic forms. It's vam, vau, in the periphrastic past, but anem, aneu, in the present tense. Most conjugations are also quite similar for both languages. Both languages are also pro-drop languages, meaning that the subject pronoun is not needed. For example, the verbs meaning to idealize, in Catalan, idealizzare, and in Italian, idealizzare. 
the verb for fear in Catalan. Temer. And in Italian. Temere. And the verb for darken in Catalan. Enfoscir. And in Italian. Inscurire. Notice here that these are irregular verbs, with ish verbs corresponding to each verb's grammar. Object pronouns are placed before the verb that agree with person and number. In Catalan, many variations of the same pronoun are used in conjunction with each other, unlike in Italian. Both languages have definite articles that contract with certain prepositions. In Catalan, these are A, B, PER. Note that feminine articles don't contract, but in Italian, prepositions can contract with all sorts of definite articles. Possessive forms are also formed similarly, which are used alongside definite articles as well. For example, this question meaning, did she sing your song? In Catalan, ha cantato la vostra canzone? In Italian, ha cantato la vostra canzone? Word for word, it's she has sung your song. Pronouns. Most Catalan and Italian pronouns are quite similar to each other, although there are a few differences. For example, the third person singular, ella, ella, compared to lui, lei. Also in Catalan, vostè, denotes the second person singular formal pronoun, but it's lei, with a capital L in Italian. Let's look at some final sentences to see what else we can find in these two languages. In Catalan, la gata blanca va a dormir amb la meva filla. In Italian, la gatta bianca ha dormito con mia figlia. These sentences mean the white cat slept with my daughter. Word for word, it's the white cat slept with my daughter. First, we see cognates with the verb cat. Gata. Gatta. These are the feminine forms. Most adjectives in both Italian and Catalan are placed after the noun in both languages. Blanca. Bianca. Note that the past tense is also formed differently. In Catalan, it's the periphrastic past, but in Italian, it's the perfect past. Also note that the conjunction for with meaning with is different in both languages. And we see that the possessive is used with the definite article. But in Italian, the possessive is used by itself because we're talking about family members. With other nouns, the definite article is used. And notice that the words for daughter are cognates. Figlia. Figlia. Remember, double L in Catalan often corresponds to GL before I or E, which makes the sound LIO. And one more pair of sentences. In Catalan, M'agrada molt jugar sense els meus amics. And in Italian, Mi piace molto giocare senza i miei amici. These mean, I like to play without my friends a lot. Word for word, it's, I like to play without my friends a lot. The verbs meaning like are not cognates, but they function in the same way, with an object pronoun. Its literal translation in both languages is like, it's likable to me. Agradar. Piacere. We see cognates in the verb for play, however. Jugar. Giocare. And the word for without. Sense. Senza. We see those cognates again in the masculine plural for my. Els meus. I miei. We see that vowel endings are more prominent in Italian, while consonant endings are more prominent in Catalan. We see this with the plural form of the word friends. Amics. Amici. A speaker of one language can easily understand the other, knowing these little details. A Catalan speaker understanding Italian, or an Italian speaker understanding Catalan, may only hear familiar words in the other language. But with that said, while they're both sister languages at heart, it's quite easy to see how related they are. Anyways, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video. Until then, I'll see you all next time.